Hi friends, welcome to our YouTube channel Naraj Academy. The main aim of this lecture is to discuss about the communication system, prelims questions of the IS or ESC exam in a very detailed manner. And if you like the content of our channel, then please do like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon button. So whenever you upload new video, the direct notifications comes from mobile. If any improvements in our lectures, then please do comment in the comment section. We will definitely include all those improvements in the coming lectures. So why to waste more time? So let's get started. So now we are going to solve the 171 question. See the question here. In a digital communication system employing frequency shift keying FSK, the 0 and the 1 bit are represented by sine waves of 10 kHz and 25 kHz respectively. These waveforms will be orthogonal for a bit interval now. So basically here we are going to use the frequency shift keying means we are going to use the current scheme here. So basically orthogonal means it indicates that we are going to use the current scheme. So therefore now based on this 1 and 0 bits for 1 bit there is a frequency f1 and for 0 bit there is a frequency f2. So now we have to find what is the bit interval. So for 1 and 0 the bit interval which is tb is same. So we have to find what is the value of the tb. So here they are given that f1 is equal to 10 kilohertz and f2 is equal to 25 kilohertz. So based on this data we have to find what is the bit interval. So what are the four options? Option b 200 microseconds. 200 microseconds is the correct solution of this question. So let's solve this numerical. So basically here there is a bipolar binary data which is a 1 bit and 0 bit. So basically for the 1 bit the time interval is tb and for 0 bit also the time interval is same which is tb. So for 1 bit we are going to produce a carrier frequency of carrier signal of some frequency f1 the signal is s1 of t and similarly for the bit 0 we are going to produce an another signal of frequency f2 let me assume it is a s2 of t so these both are sinusoidal in nature but the frequencies are different so in order to be orthogonal or we can say the current fsk here whatever the signals which are going to produce are always integer values so integer number of cycles are going to produce for the bit bit 1 and also bit 2, bit 0 and these both frequencies are not equal means here the frequencies are not equal and also here the, the number of integer cycles are also different here. So basically in this question this is tb is called as a bit interval. So now here in the question they are given that for the bit 1 the frequency we are going to generate in the carrier which is 10 kilohertz and for the bit 0 we are going to produce a sinusoidal signal of frequency 25 kilohertz. So based on this data we have to find what is this bit interval. So TB we need to figure out. So this value TB how much value we need to figure out. So basically I have already told you this from the previous example itself which is in the previous lecture itself which is F1 is equal to K1 into RB and F2 is equal to K2 into RB where RB is called as a bit rate. So here always here K1 is not equal to K2 which are the integers. They both are integers and this is K1 is not equal to K2. So the condition for this K1 is K1 is not equal to K2 and this both has to be integers. So therefore here based on these conditions so now what I am going to do is I am going to divide this F1 by F2. So if you do the division F1 by F2 we are going to get K1 RB by K2 into RB as RB is called as a bit rate which is same. So therefore we are going to eliminate this one. So cancel this one. So finally we are going to get K1 by K2. So K1 by K2 is equal to F1 by f2 so we know the value of f1 10 kilohertz and f2 is 25 kilohertz so if you do the division we are going to get here 5 2s are 5 5s are so 2 by 5 we are going to get the ratio k1 by k2 is equal to 2 by 5 we are going to get see now let i am going to assume k1 is equal to 2 so if k1 is equal to 2 then definitely we are going to get k2 is equal to 5 so this one also i have already told you which is tb the time interval tb this time interval tb for the bit 1 suppose if one signal if one signal has a time period t1 as there are integer number of cycles so i am going to assume there are k integer number of cycles so the total time tb is equal to number of integer cycles into t1 so therefore tb is equal to k1 into t1 so here t1 is the frequency time period so it is inverse of the frequency which is k1 by f1 so i know the value of k1 i also know the value of f1 so substitute them so tb is equal to k1 is 2 and f1 is 10 kilohertz 10 to 10 to the power of 3 so if you solve this one we are going to get 0 0.2 milliseconds so we can also write which is 200 microseconds so the bit interval is 200 microseconds so we did this for the bit 1 so let me do the same process for the bit 0 also see for the bit 0 here this is the signal we are going to generate suppose this signal has a time period of tt so one cycle has a time period of tt and there are integer number of cycles so let me assume there are k2 integer number of cycles so the 
total bit interval for the zero is equal to number of cycles into the time period of the one cycle which is t2 so therefore t2 is equal to k2 into t2 so t2 is nothing but inverse of the frequency which is k2 by f2 as i already have, i have taken k2 is equal to 5 and f2 is equal to 25 into 25 kilohertz so substitute them finally we are going to get tb is equal to 0 0.2 milliseconds means you can write in convert in terms of microseconds which is tb is equal to 200 microseconds so whether you do the process for the bit 1 or whether you do the process for the bit 0 finally we are going to get the same answer which is tb is equal to 200 microseconds because bit interval is same for the bit 1 and also bit 0 so by that is a fashion either you go for the bit 1 or bit 2 or bit 0 we are going to get the same interval bit interval which is tb is equal to 200 microseconds and this is a correct solution of this question now we are going to solve the 172 question see the question here for a given data rate so for a given data rate the bandwidth bp of a psk signal phase shift keying signal and the bandwidth b naught of the ook where ook represents the on off keying signal are related as so so in this question they are asking we want to find the relation between the PSK signal and also on off keying signal. So, what is the bandwidth, the relation between these two signals we need to figure out. So, out of the four options, option C, so BB is equal to B naught means the bandwidth of the both these signals is same. So, we will discuss why it is like that. So, basically for the analog signals, we have discussed the three types of modulation techniques which are the amplitude modulation, frequency modulation and the phase modulation. This is for the analog signals. So now for digital signals or the digital communication, we are going to discuss the another three methods which are the ASK called as the amplitude shift keying and FSK is called as the frequency shift keying and for the PSK is phase shift keying. So basically this amplitude shift keying is also called as the on off keying. So this ASK is called as the amplitude shift keying is also called as the on off keying. So this is another name for this ASK. ASK. So basically in this question they are asking suppose the bandwidth of this ASK is B0 and the bandwidth of this PSK is BP. So they are asking what is the relation between this B0 and BP. So band yeah. bandwidth of the ASK and the bandwidth of the PSK. PSK they are asking what is the relation between them. So before that let me tell you what is the bandwidth for this each and every domain so therefore what for this ASK what is the bandwidth and for FSK what is the bandwidth and for PSK what is the bandwidth we are going to discuss here so bandwidth for the amplitude shift to keying or the on of keying which is twice the bit rate so twice the bit rate is the bandwidth for the ASK or the OOK and also for the bandwidth of the FSK which is F1 minus F2 plus 2 times of bit rate so where F1 is called as the frequency of the carrier signal for the bit 1 and for the F2 is a frequency of the carrier signal for the bit 0 so therefore now bandwidth of the PSK which is 2 times of bit rate so if you see carefully the bandwidth of the ASK or the on of key is equal to the bandwidth of the PSK but here bandwidth of the F FSK which is 2RB is also present but there is a some extra number or extra quantity F1 minus F2 which is a positive number so because of this this FSK will be greater bandwidth of the FSK is greater when compared to the remaining two so finally we can give a relation between the bandwidth of each and everything which is bandwidth of the FSK is greater than and greater than the bandwidth of ASK is equal to bandwidth of the PSK so in this question the bandwidth of the ASK is B0 and the bandwidth of the PSK is BP so we already know the bandwidth of the ASK is equal to bandwidth of the PSK which is twice the bit rate so therefore we can conclude that yes the bandwidth of the ASK are also called as the OOK means on of keying is equal to the bandwidth of the PSK now we are going to solve the 173 question see the question here a TDM link has 20 signal channels and each channel is sampled at 8 kilohertz each sample is represented by 7 bits and contains an additional bit for synchronization. So the total bit rate for the TDM link is, so basically here they are given that 20 signal channels. So therefore, these 20 signals are being transmitted through these channels and also the frequency sampling means each signal is going to sample at a frequency of 8 kilohertz. So and also we are going to send one extra bit for each and every signal. So one extra bit we are going to send for synchronization means there will be no crossover talk. So therefore, from this we have to find what is the bit rate, total bit rate we need to figure out and each sample is going to represent by 7 bits. So from this data we have to find what is the total bit rate of this 
TDM link wing to fluid. So what is the four options? Option A, one one two eight kilobit per second is the correct solution of this question. So let's solve this numerical. So this question belongs to the concept of the TDM time division multiplexing. So basically there are twenty signal channels means here. So here in the TDM, so we are going to transmit all these signals through one time frame. So suppose there is a one time frame. Let me assume this is a T. So this is a time frame. So here, so in this time frame we are going to take. From each signal, we are going to take one sample. Suppose this is a sample one from the first signal, and this is a sample first from the second signal, and sample one from the third signal. Like this, there are twenty things we have to take here because twenty signals are there. And finally, here we need to take one synchronous bit. So they are also given that have, we have to take one synchronous bit. So therefore. But first thing is we have to take each and every individual sample, the first sample from each and every signal we have to take here, and then we have to take another synchronizing bit so that in order to avoid the crosstalk between the channels, we have to take here synchronizing bit. So therefore here this is called as a total one frame time. So therefore now here in this question they are given that now the number of signal channels are twenty and the frequency of sampling is eight kilohertz. So one frame time is called as a TS, which is TS is one by F S. So the number of bits per sample. So whatever the sample you are sampling, so this sample is going to be represented by seven bits. So each sample is represented by seven bits. So now and the number of synchronous bits is one. So at each time frame, at the end of the time frame, we have we have to send a one signal or one pulse of synchronous bit. We are going to send here. So which is NS is equal to one. One synchronous. Bit we are going to transmit. So based on this here, we have to find what is the bit rate. So bit rate formula is n into capital N into F S plus F S into N S. Because if you see carefully, so here in one time frame, in one time frame we are sending the n number of samples. So n number of samples means n into F S. So this indicates that number of samples are being transmitted. So and also each sample is represented by a n. n number of bits so n into n into fs and similarly here there is only ns is called as a number of synchronous bits in one time frame how many we are going to send ns but there are total fs so fs is a sampling frequency so fs into ns so this is a formula so substitute each and every value so n is 7 capital n is 20 and fs is 8 and also fs is 8 and ns is 1 so if you substitute this Values we are going to get the total bit rate is equal to one one two eight kilobits per second. So if you want to know what is the unit of this n, n is called as the number of bits per sample. So the unit of n is number of bits per sample. So for one sample, how many bits we are going to represent? And also the capital N into F is called as the number of samples per second. So in one second, how many samples we are going to transmit? So if you do the multiplication of these two things, then what we are going to get? So bits per sample. So bits per Per sample into sample per second into sample per second. So what we are going to get now? So sample sample gets cancels. So we are going to get bits per second. So therefore the unit of the bit rate is bits per second. So these many bits are being transmitted by this TDM. So with these parameter values. So basically this time division multiplex is they are going to take one time frame. Time frame is the TS, which is the inverse of the frequency sampling frequency. So in this time domain we have to take from each and every signal we have to take. One sample, so one sample we have to take, and the end of this we have to take one synchronizing sample also in order to avoid the crosstalk between these channels. So because of this, how much is the bit rate? So therefore, here how many bit rate is number of bits per second are being transmitted? So this is the standard formula. So now we are going to solve the one seventy four question. See the question here. Digital modulation techniques are used in satellite communication system because so because of what is the reason we are going to use the digital modulation techniques in the satellite communication. So basically, in the satellite communication, on what reason we are going to use this digital modulation techniques? So out of the four options, option D, they are less prone to interference. So because of this reason, they are less prone to interference. We are going to use this digital modulation, and let us see why this is going. to happen like this so basically what is the modulation modulation means we have already discussed for the analog signals see basically analog signals of low frequency range so in order to transmit this low frequency signals to a larger distance we have to go to the process of modulation means we are going to increase the carrier frequency so therefore we are going to change the low frequency message signal to a high frequency message signal so now it can be transmitted over a long distance so that is the reason we are going to use the modulation and also the same modulation 
solution we have to we are going to use in also for the digital signals because even the digital signals cannot be transmitted for long distance so because of that reason also we are going to use this modulation techniques in both analog communication and also in the digital communication also we are going to use here so basically suppose this is a signal of one means a digital signal of one and this is a zero so therefore for signal one for signal one we are going to generate one frequency and for the signal zero we are going to generate the another frequency so because of this carrier frequency higher frequency so now this data or digital data can be transmitted over a long distance so basically by changing the frequency this is called as a band pass transmission means by using this transmission by using the frequency range of carrier higher we can transmit the digital data to a higher distance or long range of distance so basically what are the methods which are modulation techniques which are used in the digital communication or we can say basically there are three modulation schemes which are used in the digital communication or the digital modulation so what are the three methods so here ask pf fsk and psk in the there we have studied about the am pm and fm so here we are going to use the ask fsk and psk in the digital communication where ask is called as the amplitude shift queuing and frequency shift queuing and phase shift queuing so therefore ask is also called as the on off queuing also we can call it here so what are the advantages of the digital modulation so with the help of these modulations what are the advantages we are going to get by these modulation techniques so basically we are going to get the better performance yes the performance by using this digital modulation or digital communication is better than the analog way and also better error detection and the correction efficiency yes see we can betterly detect the error and also we can correct the error by using the digital communication and also signal to noise ratio increases means the signal power will be higher strength when compared to the noise power when compared to the analog communication so therefore signal to noise ratio is also increases so therefore we can say less prone to interference of noise yes the noise effect is also going to decrease in digital communication so because of this reason only we are going to use the digital communication in the satellites or the digital modulation also we are going to use the satellites because of these are the advantages so in the question they are given this option so less prone to interference of noise means because of this reason we are going to use this digital modulation these techniques are used in the satellite communication so this is a correct solution of this question so now we are going to solve the 175 question see the question here which one of the following modulation techniques is mostly affected by noise so out of these modulation techniques so which modulation technique is most affected by noise so when compared to the remaining modulation techniques so out of the four options option a amplitude shift king is the method by this we are going to get most affected by noise when compared to the remaining methods of the digital modulation techniques so let's discuss something more about this one so now we are going to discuss why ASK is more going to be affected by the noise because because if you take here some because in this line we are going to use the digital modulation technique of the ASK so where ASK is the amplitude shift key means here amplitude of the signal is going to main concern so, so because because of some reasons if externally some electromagnetic induction or we can say some heating effect or some surges if suddenly they are going to occur then this amplitude of the signal is going to get changed so but here in ASK amplitude itself is the main criteria so therefore if the amplitude itself is changing then the amplitude changes means that so at the receiver end the detection may is going to get wrong so because of these reasons so because of these noises of externally this amplitude is going to get changed so here amplitude itself is the main criteria for deciding the signal strength so therefore we can say here here ASK is a more susceptible so we, here ASK is the more susceptible to the noise means the noise effect is more in the ASK than FSK and the PSK so this is the relation of the noise effect so here noise effect in ASK is very higher when compared to noise effect in the FSK and the noise effect of the PSK this is the relation so here the noise effect is going to satisfy this poison distribution so whenever the values x increases this noise ratio is going to decreases means the noise is going to decreases so here how we are going to see this is we are going to discuss in the class itself so these are some of the important relations of the the probability of error in the ASK the probability of error in the FSK and the probability of error in the PSK this is a Q is a function of this value and Q is a function of this value and Q is a function of this value so if you see carefully this is 2 EB by eta where EB by eta and EB by 2 
e b by 2 into eta so if you see carefully here suppose i am going to assume here x this is all thing as x x x so this value is higher when compared to this value and this value is higher when compared to this value so when x is increases so when x is increases the probability of error is going to decrease so if you see carefully here this x value is very higher so we can say this x is very higher means the probability of error is very low and probability of error is lesser and probability of error is more so so therefore we can conclude that the probability of error or the noise effect is very higher in the ASK greater than the probability of error or noise effect is greater than the FSK and probability of error is higher than the FSK so this is the PSK this is the relation between the ASK FSK and PSK because here x value is very higher so x value is suppose the x value is higher here so therefore because of this this is the amplitude we are going to get so this is the probability of error but here this x value is somewhat lower so therefore we are going to get here so this probability of error is more higher and here the x value is still lesser so therefore here the probability of error might be here so therefore this is called as a probability of error due to ASK and this is the probability of error due to FSK and this is the probability of error due to PSK. So because of this we can tell the probability of error in ASK is higher than the probability of error in the uh, FSK is greater than the probability of error in the PSK. So the main criteria is here amplitude is the main criteria in the amplitude shift key. If amplitude itself is changing means so there is a noise effect is very higher in the ASK or on off keying. So ASK is also called as the on off keying. So now we are going to solve the 176th question. See the question here. It is a assertion reason type question. So assertion A is current FSK system is preferred over non-current FSK. And the reason R is current FSK requires less power than non-current FSK. So here out of the four of its options says the correct means assertion is correct and the reason is false. So we will discuss why the assertion is correct and the reason is false. So now we will discuss the difference between the non-current FSK and the current FSK. So basically the current FSK means here the number of cycles or we are going to get the pure integer cycles we are going to get in the carrier signal. So this is all about the current FSK. So if you are not going to get the integer signals in the carrier then we are going to say it is a non-current FSK. So now we are going to see some of the differences between this non-current FSK and the current FSK. So basically in the current FSK we are going to use the current detector. So basically in this circuit in this current FSK we are going to use the current detector circuit is used. So because of this reason only it is very hard to implement means the circuit is a very complex circuit. But here in the non-current FSK here there is no current detector is not used. So here there is no need of current because current is not a priority here. So therefore current detector is not used here. So because of this there is circuit is a very simple to implement. So the non-current FSK is very simple to implement rather than the current FSK because in current FSK they need an extra current detector so because of that the circuit is very complex to implement for the current FSK and also the probability of error means the noise effect is very higher in the non-current FSK rather than the current FSK so in current FSK the error is very less when compared to the non-current FSK so this is also we have studied here and also here as the circuit is very simple so therefore the power consumption is also very less but the circuit is very complex so more number of circuit elementaries are in this more number of circuit elements are used so we can say the power consumption is also increased so therefore the power consumption of the current FSK is very higher than the power consumption of the non-current FSK and also here this non-current FSK is less preferred than the current FSK because the current FSK has lot of advantages like here the error is very less and also here here because of some other extra reasons also so because of it is very the probability of error is very less here so because of this reason it is more preferred than the non-current FSK. So these are the some of the differences between the non-current FSK and the current FSK. So this relation I already discussed in the previous example itself which is the probability of error in the angular shift keying is very higher than the probability of error in the frequency shift keying is always greater than the probability of error in the phase shift keying. Suppose if you are going to use the current 
correlate and non coherent phenomena then we are going to see what is the exact relation so the probability of error in the non coherent ask is greater than the the probability of error in the non coherent fsk greater than the the probability of error in the coherent fsk is equal to the probability of error in the coherent ask is greater than the probability of error in the psk it's a very very important relation this is a general relation so if you are going to use the non coherent and coherent nature then we are going to see what is the nature what is the probability of error between these things between the non coherent ask between the coherent ask and between the non coherent fsk and between the coherent fsk so this is a relation between all these things so finally here in the assertion they have told that coherent fsk is more preferred than the non coherent fsk so you can see here yes the coherent detector the coherent detector is more preferred see the coherent detector is more preferred than the non coherent prefer so therefore assertion is correct but in the reason they have told that coherent fsk requires less power than the non coherent fsk so here coherent fsk requires less power than the non coherent fsk it is wrong because the power consumption of the coherent is very higher because it is going to use an extra elements so circuit is complex so it is going to consume more power and the non coherent is going to consume less power so therefore reason is wrong it has to be actually it has to be the non coherent fsk consumes less power than the coherent fsk it has to be like that so therefore we can say that this reason is wrong and the assertion is correct so therefore this is a correct solution of this question so these are the some of the important difference between the non coherent fsk and the coherent fsk so now we are going to solve the 171 question see the question here a modulation technique in which the bandwidth of the modulated signal is extended well beyond the bandwidth of the modulating signal and independent of the modulating signal bandwidth is called as so basically in this question they are given a, a big statement and they are asking this statement is going to belong to which category so therefore it to which modulation technique they are asking so what are the four options option c spread spectrum modulation is the correct solution of this question option c is the correct solution of this question so let's discuss something more about this one so now we'll discuss some of the important points of the spread spectrum modulation so basically this is a modulation technique suppose if you are going to take any signal and if you use this modulation technique which is called as a spread spectrum modulation so by this modulation we are going to get some of the important advantages which are the secure communication so here basically by this communication if you use this modulation technique so we are going to provide a very secure communication because it uses code which is independent of the message signal so here it is so whatever the code so there is a code here suppose whatever the message signal if you want to receive at the receiver here there is a code here so without this code you can't receive this message signal so therefore no one can know this code except the person who is developed this one so because of this reason so it, this code is independent of the message signal so therefore because of this reason only so this is a very secure communication so because of this secure communication it is used in the military applications and also there is no interference interference means noise effect is not used in this spread spectrum modulation technique because we are going to use the code here between the input and the receiver so transmitter and the receiver we are going to use this code which is independent of the message signal so because of this reason it is it is going to provide you the most secure communication and also because of that reason it is used in the military applications and also some of the important points is it is going to transmit the signal at low power density and wide spread of signals so at wide spread of signals is it is going to occupy the huge amount of bandwidth it is going to occupy the huge amount of bandwidth with a lower range of the power density and also the bandwidth of the transmitter signal will be very very higher very very higher than the bandwidth of the message signal itself so the important points of this spectrum modulation is it is a modulation technique in which the bandwidth of the transmitter signal is very very higher than the bandwidth of the message signal and also this message signal the transmitter and the receiver the code between them is independent of the message signal so therefore because of this reason it is going to give you a proper proper or secure communication and because of this reason it is used in the military applications so now we are going to solve the 178 question see the question here which one of the following statements is correct so for coherent detection of digital signals the receiver must be so for coherent detection of digital signals the receiver must be so how the receiver should be designed or how the receiver should be made so all the four options option b synchronized in phase only so therefore why we are going to make the synchronization phase so why we are going to make the synchronization in phase only then we are going to discuss here option b is the correct solution of this question which is synchronized in phase only is the correct solution of this question so let's solve this one 
So he basically this is a transmitter. So transmitter is going to send the digital signals and the receiver is going to receive these digital signals. So basically now we have to see to have a current detection means to have a current way of detection. So what is the nature we have to do at the receiver? Suppose at the transmitter we are going to use a carrier frequency FC then at receiver also we should use the same frequency same process we should use in the analog modulation also. So here whatever the transmitter frequency carrier frequency same amount of carrier frequency you should use even at the receiver then only we can get the current detection so therefore phase is called as a phase is equal to omega into t where omega is equal to 2 pi f so if the frequency is same if the frequency is same at the transmitter and the receiver then the phase is also same so we can conclude that this has to be synchronized in phase means it has to give a same amount of carrier frequency at the receiver and the transmitter for both the analog modulation and also for the digital modulation we have to use this one so here we have to use we have to give priority only for the synchronized in phase then only we can get the current detection between the receiver and the transmitter so now we are going to solve the 179 question see the question here which one of the following is the impulse response of a matched filter for a signal s of t of the type shown below so basically here there is a matched filter so for this matched filter if the input is s of t then i want to figure out what is the impulse response of this matched filter i need to figure out so therefore out of the four options option b is the correct solution of this question so let's solve this numerical so basically this is a question about the matched filter concept so matched filter here let me assume the impulse response of this matched filter is h of t so if the input is s of t then what is the output output is equal to convolution of the s of t input and the impulse response so basically in this question they have given that input s of t this is a waveform so based on this i want to find what is the impulse response of this matched filter we need to figure out so the basic aim of this matched filter is to improve the or to get the maximum value of the signal to noise ratio means here this matched filter is going to give you a, a maximum value of the this matched filter is trying to give you about the maximum value of the signal to noise power means the signal strength will be very very higher when compared to the noise power this is the main aim of the matched filter so now here they are given the input s of t so i want to find what is the impulse response i need to figure out so basically the impulse response for a matched filter will be so whatever the input you are going to get you have to replace t by t by capital t minus t so whatever the t whatever the t of the input you have to replace with the capital t minus small t so your input is a s of t so in place of x keep it here s so therefore here in place of t replace t by capital t minus t so s of capital t minus t so i can write in another fashion which is s of minus t of minus of minus t so this is the waveform i want to get this waveform this is a nothing but it is a impulse response so here initial position is zero and the final position is t so initial position is zero and final position is t i have taken here so here in a standard format of s of minus t comma minus t so you have to add a minus t for the initial position the final position so zero minus t is nothing but minus t so t minus t is nothing but zero again there is a minus so you have to go for the division of minus one so minus t by minus one we are going to get t so 0 by minus 1 is again 0 so this 0 position is came to t position and this t position is came to 0 so at 0 position what is the amplitude it is 0 so at now this position will become like this one so this is the graph so therefore this is the impulse response so this graph is changed or it is just a mood here and there with conversion then we are going to get this is a waveform so therefore we can say this is the impulse response so no matter whatever the input just you have to replace t by capital t minus t where capital t is the bandwidth of this or time period or the pulse of the pulse the pulse of this signal which is capital t minus small t so this is the function of this matched filter the basic aim of this matched filter is to give you the maximum value of the signal to noise ratio means giving the highest value of the signal power with the lowest value of the noise power so now we are going to solve the 180 question see the question here a digital communication system uses 8 psk modulation and transmits 3600 bits per second so what is the symbol there so basically here in this question they are given that 8 
psk and also they are go they are going to use the 8 psk modulation and also they are going to transmit the number of bits which is 3600 bits per second so based on this we need to find what is the symbol that means what are the number of symbols per second are being transmitted that is what we need to figure out so what are the four options option d 1200 symbols per second is the correct solution of this question so let's solve this numerical so now we'll discuss about some of the important concept and then we'll solve this numerical see for m array psk phase shift key the basic formula is the symbol rate is equal to bit rate by log m base 2 so here m is called as the where m is called as the number of symbols where m is called as the number of symbols so here m is called as the number of symbols and n is called as the number of bits for each symbol so for each and every symbol how many bits we are going to represent suppose if there are n bits so if there are n bits so how many symbols we are going to get which is 2 to the power of n because with the help of n bits how many combinations we can make 2 to the power of n combinations means 2 to the power of n number of symbols we can make which is called as a m so therefore this is called as a number of symbols m so we can say 2 to the power of n is equal to m so i want to write in another fashion so therefore n is equal to log m base 2 so basically this is nothing but the number of bits for each symbol is n and the total number of symbols we are going to get with the help of n is m so therefore this is the relation between the number of symbols total number of symbols and also number of bits for each symbol so where rb is called as a bit rate means how many bits per second are being transferred that is the true meaning of the bit rate so now what is the symbol rate symbol rate is equal to the bit rate by log m base 2 so here rb is called as a bit rate the unit or the dimension of the bit rate is bits per second and log m2 is nothing but it is equal to n n is called as a number of bits per symbol so for each symbol how many bits we are going to represent so if you do the division of this one we are going to get symbol per second is a unit or the dimension of the symbol rate so therefore this is a set formula so now in this question they are given the bit rate is equal to 3600 bits per second and m is equal to 8 means 8 array psk means 8 symbols are used in this phase shift model phase shift keying so therefore m is equal to 8 8 number of symbols are used so substitute directly in the symbol rate formula which is bit rate by log m base 2 so so 8 is nothing but 2 cube so therefore 8 we can replace with 2 cube so 3 is going to come here so 3 into log 2 base 2 so log 2 base 2 is nothing but 1 so 3 into 1 is again 1 so 3600 by 3 if you do this one we are going to get here 1200 so therefore we can say the symbol rate is equal to 1200 and the unit is symbols per second so for one second these many numbers of symbols are being transmitted so therefore this is a symbol rate so now we are going to solve the last question of this lecture see the question here assertion and reason type question assertion a is fsk signaling is inferior to psk signaling and the reason r is psk requires less bandwidth than the fsk so out of the four options option b is the correct solution of this question means assertion is correct and reason is correct and reason is not the correct explanation of the assertion so now we will see about this one so basically here now we are going to solve this question here listen carefully i have already told you these expressions the probability of error it is a function of q of x so this is going to follow the poison distribution so whenever the value of x increases the probability of error is going to decrease us so therefore i have already told you the probability of error for the ask fsk and psk these are the expressions so if you see carefully i am going to assume this is x so if you see carefully this value is higher two times of eb by n and this is eb by n and this is eb by 2n so this value is very higher compared to this value and this value is very higher compared to this value so therefore if this value is very higher means the x is going to higher so we are going to get this is the probability of error due to the psk and this value is very lesser when compared to this value so because of that this probability of error will be here because x is going to decrease so we are going to get probability of error due to fsk and this x value the q of x function of x this value is still lesser than this value so therefore this is a probability of error so therefore here we are going to get here the probability of error because of the ask so we can conclude that here yes 
the probability of error due to ASK is very higher than the probability of error due to FSK, it is greater than the probability of error PSK. So therefore, this is the relation we are going to get. So this question they are given that in assertion, the FSK is very inferior to the PSK. Yes, because the probability of error in FSK is very, very higher. So because of this, we can tell that here FSK method is FSK method is very inferior, means it is less preferred than this PSK because here the probability of error in PSK is very, very less when compared to the probability of error in FSK. So we can say this PSK is very superior than the FSK or in, in another fashion we can say FSK is very inferior or less preferred than the PSK. This is the true meaning of the assertion. Yes, assertion is correct one. So we can conclude that yes, assertion is a very very correct. And here if you want to know what is the value of this EB and eta, so where eta is equal to K into T, so where K is called as a Boltzmann constant and T is called as a temperature. So your EB is called as a L square Tb by 2, where A is called as the amplitude of the carrier signal and Tb is called as the bit interval. Yes, we have studied about the what is the bit interval in the FSK domain. So, therefore, this is the bit interval. So, where A is called as the amplitude of the signal, where Tb is called as the bit interval and where P is the independent of bandwidth. Yes, if you see carefully here, P is only the function of Eb and eta, where Eb is independent of bandwidth and eta is also independent of bandwidth. So, no way the probability of error is not is going to relate with the bandwidth of this ASK, FSK and PSK. So therefore we can conclude that that here the probability of error is independent of the bandwidth of the modulated signals because of this ASK modulation technique, FSK modulation technique and PSK modulation technique. So now we will see about the reason. So in the reason they are asking what is the bandwidth nature of the FSK and PSK. So let us see here bandwidth nature. So here bandwidth of the ASK is twice the bit rate and the bandwidth of the FSK is F1 minus F2 plus 2RB where F1 is called as a carrier frequency, carrier signal frequency relating to the bit of 1 and F2 is a carrier frequency relating to the bit of 0. So therefore, F1 is always greater than the F2. So therefore, again the bandwidth of the PSK is the twice of the bit rate, twice of the bit rate. So by these three relationship, we can figure out the bandwidth of the ASK is greater than the bandwidth. So the bandwidth of the ASK is equal to bandwidth of the PSK. But here, this always is going to give you a positive quantity because F1 is always greater than the F2. So therefore, this 2RB, because of small quantity, so we are going to get this frequency higher. So by this relations, the bandwidth, we can conclude that yes, the bandwidth of the FSK is greater than bandwidth of ASK is equal to bandwidth of the PSK. So in the assertion, they have told that the FSK signaling is inferior to PSK signaling. Yes, because FSK signal means it is going to have higher error so because of this we can say this is inferior than the psk means we can say we can we can tell in another manner that is psk is more superior than the fsk because psk has a low amount of error yes assertion is correct now now let us see about the reason so in the reason they have told that psk requires less bandwidth than fsk so psk has less bandwidth than compared to fsk or we can say the bandwidth of the fsk is greater than the psk so therefore the reason is also correct but if you see carefully the probability of error is independent of the bandwidth. So I already told you this expression is independent of the bandwidth. So I can tell you this S yes, the assertion is correct, the reason is correct and the correct explanation of the assertion is because of the error. So because of the error decreases, we can say that PSK is more superior than FSK or we can say FSK is inferior than the PSK because the correct explanation should be the probability of error is very very higher in FSK when compared to PSK. That has to be the exact reason, not the bandwidth reason because the probability of error is independent of the bandwidth. So therefore, we can conclude that here as assertion is correct and reason is correct and also the reason is not the correct explanation of the assertion. The correct explanation must be the probability of error in FSK is very higher when compared to the probability of error in the PSK because here because of this reason only we are going to tell that here this method is very very inferior than the PSK method or we can say the PSK is more superior than the FSK method. So before I conclude this lecture, let me tell you a small concept regarding the FSK scheme, which is frequency shift keying. So I've already told you what is the bandwidth of the FSK, which is F1 minus F2 plus two times of bit rate. So here this diagram already I've shown you in the previous 
examples itself this is a bipolar binary data this is the data this is the digital data i want to transmit to a receiver by using the digital modulation techniques so the digital modulation technique which i am going to use here is fsk scheme frequency shift scheme so this is a binary data one and is a binary data zero so we are going to transmit with the frequency of carrier frequency for the bit interval one we are going to frequency f1 and for the bit interval zero we are going to use another carrier frequency of f2 so this signal is going to assume as s1 of t and this signal we are going to assume it as s2 of t so the bit interval is same for each and every bit 1 and bit 0 so this is a frequency f1 and frequency f2 always we are going to assume f1 is always greater than the f2 so because of that reason here we are going to get f1 minus f2 is positive so that is the reason the bandwidth of the fsk is always higher than the bandwidth of the ask and also bandwidth of the psk so if you want to know what is a transmitter the exact block diagram of the fsk transmitter is see this binary data we need to send it to a receiver so we have to go through the modulation of digital techniques so here fsk digital modulation we are going to use so this binary data bipolar bi binary data we need to send to a ba balanced modulator this function is to do the multiplication of the two signals so binary data and the s1 of t which is a cos 2 by f1 t which is the frequency for the bit one and also here again we have to use another balanced modulator with another source of s2 of t which is a cos 2 by f2 t which is the signal carrier signal we are going to give it to a at bit zero so therefore this is a not gate so this is a not gate so whatever the signals we are going to get output of these two balanced modulators we have to sum it and we have to send it to a receiver so therefore this is the signal this is the net signal which is transmitted by this digital modulation technique fsk which is the fs of t fsk this signal see the range of frequencies which are carried by this s of t as a bandwidth of this is a bandwidth so this bandwidth is going to relate with respect to this signal means this signal is going to have a frequency range of bandwidth is equal to f1 minus f2 plus two times of bit rate this is the true meaning of this bandwidth of the s of t of fsk and also what is the block diagram of the fsk transmitter this is a block diagram exact block diagram of the fsk transmitter and this is the way we are going to do the fsk frequency shift keying so for bit one we are going to use another frequency and bit zero we are going to use a different frequency so by these reasons we are going to transmit the signal because a digital signal can all be transferred to higher distance so by using the modulation techniques we can transmit it to a very very large range of distances by this lecture we have successfully completed the yeah. questions in a very detailed manner and if you like the content of our channel then please do like share and subscribe our youtube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon button so whenever you upload a new video the direct notifications comes to mobile if any improvements in our real lectures then please do comment in the comment section we will definitely include all those improvements in the coming lectures thank you so much for watching this lecture keep smiling take care and bye bye